Welcome to a video showing some Japanese World War II military aircraft that I personally photographed or videoed in museums in the United States. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Mitsubishi designed the A6M0 based on a Japanese Navy requirement for a fighter that was fast, maneuverable, and had great range. Compared to its opponents, it was exceptionally light, providing maneuverability and high speeds with a low-powered engine. Some consequences of its light construction included omitting armor protection for the pilot, not using self-sealing fuel tanks, and building lightweight wings as an integral part of the fuselage. The Zero first saw combat in China in the late 1940s, and it quickly helped Japan dominate the air in Asia. In the early part of the war, Allied aircraft such as the Curtis P-40 and Seversky P-35 were at a disadvantage in a dogfight with a Zero flown by a skilled pilot, and the Zero became a well-known and dangerous opponent. American pilots gained experience fighting the Zero in China with the American Volunteer Group, known as the Flying Tigers, and at the Battle of Midway. The key to fighting the Zero was to stay out of dogfights and instead use superior armament and hit-and-run diving attacks against the relatively fragile A6M Zero. As Allied pilots used their heavily armed aircraft to advantage, the Zero's dominance ended. Beginning around October 1944, during the battle for the Philippines, Zeros were used in kamikaze attacks. The A6M20 displayed at the Air Force Museum was found in Papua New Guinea and is painted to represent a section leader's aircraft from the aircraft carrier Zeho during the Battle of the Bismarck Sea. The Naval Aviation Museum Zero was assembled using components from several wrecked aircraft at an abandoned airstrip near Roganville. The Kawasaki Ki-45 Toru Dragon Slayer was a two-seat, twin-engine heavy fighter used by the Imperial Japanese Army during World War II. Entering service in 1941, it was popular with flight crews who used it primarily for attacking ground targets and ships, including U.S. Navy PT boats. It was also the only Japanese Army night fighter to see action during the war. The Smithsonian Museum's Ki-45 Mod C is the last known survivor of 1,700 Ki-45s built by Kawasaki. The Nakajima J1N1S Gecko was designed as a three-seat daylight escort fighter airplane, then was modified as a night fighter in May 1943. The Gecko, meaning moonlight, was redesigned to hold only two crewmen so that an upward-firing gun could be mounted where the observer once sat. Nearly 500 geckos, including prototypes, escort, reconnaissance, and night fighters, were built during World War II. A sizable number were used as kamikaze aircraft in the Pacific. This J-1N1 is displayed at the Smithsonian Museum and is the last one remaining. Its restoration took more than four years and 17,000 man-hours to accomplish. The N1K2 Shidenkai, Japanese for Violet Lightning Improved, was the best Japanese naval fighter used in significant numbers during World War II and was known to the Allies as the George. Though heavier than the Zero, it possessed surprisingly good maneuverability due to a mercury switch that automatically extended wing flaps during turns. Its poor 20mm automatic cannon provided greatly increased firepower compared to earlier Japanese designs. It was a worthy late war competitor versus U.S. Navy and U.S. Army Air Force's fighters. It first entered combat in early 1945, and over 400 were produced before the war ended. The Air Force Museum's N1K2-JA is a fighter-bomber variant of the Shidenkai, equipped with wing mounts to carry bombs. The Shidenkai, on display at the Naval Aviation Museum, served with the 343rd Air Group 
led by the famous Captain Minoru Genda and was manned by Japanese aces. The Smithsonian Museum's restored charge also wears the colors and markings of the 343rd Air Group. These aircraft are three of the four surviving examples of the N1K2 George. Kyushu's J7W1 Shiden was the only World War II aircraft of canard configuration where the main wing is mounted at the rear of the fuselage and a smaller wing fixed to the front. It was to be turbojet powered but did not get past the prototype stage when the war ended and this one, exhibited at the Smithsonian Museum, is the first prototype. Late in 1944, the Japanese Navy moved toward using human-guided missiles to attack Allied warships. The first Naval Air Technical Bureau answered this requirement with the single-seat MXY-7 K2 OA-11 Cherry Blossom. It was actually a human-guided missile brought within striking range by twin-engine bombers such as the Mitsubishi G4M Betty. The Smithsonian Museum's K2 Cherry Blossom is the last remaining example of this desperate technology. The Aichi M6A1 CRM was designed to fulfill the Japanese naval requirement for a bomber that could operate exclusively from a submarine aircraft carrier, then in production. Japanese war planners devised the idea as a means of striking directly at the United States mainland and other important strategic targets, like the Panama Canal, that lay thousands of kilometers from Japan. After delivery of the first two prototypes, the Navy ordered the start of production. However, progress virtually stopped after a major earthquake severely disrupted the production line in December 1944. As the war deteriorated in March 1945, the Navy curtailed the submarine program. No CROM ever saw combat, but the airplane-slash-submarine weapons system represents an ingenious blend of aviation and marine technology. This M6A1 is exhibited at the Smithsonian Museum and was the last airframe built, and it is the only surviving example. I hope you enjoyed this narrated video covering Japanese World War II aircraft that are displayed in the United States.